Hello, I am hoping that you have already printed your pre-lecture notes and I encourage you to write examples on your pre-lecture notes. What we see at the top of our screen is the order of operations. These can be memorized using please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or just making this into a word PEMDAS. Level 1 is where we use parentheses or any other grouping symbol. Some of the grouping symbols that we might see are brackets, absolute value, or a fraction bar. The second level of order of operations is exponents. This includes both powers and roots. Powers are things like squared or cubed. Roots are things like square root or cube root. Our third level is multiplication and division. We want to do these from left to right. That means sometimes we will multiply first and sometimes we will divide first. The last level is addition and subtraction. Again, this is from left to right. The next section of our notes, I typed in the information for you, but we're going to take time to talk about it. So we were asked to define absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. Some key things is that it does not have the distributive property. It does work as a grouping symbol and it gives a non-negative value. Let's take a look at just a few examples. I encourage you to jot them onto your paper. So for examples, we'll start out with an easy one. The absolute value symbol is just a straight line. So we're going to work with the absolute value of 15. So literally that's asking us how many spaces, what is its distance from zero on a number line? And the answer is just 15. So a little bit more challenging. What if we have the absolute value of negative 12? Well, what that's asking us is how many spaces from zero is negative 12? And so we just ask distance, that distance is indeed 12. Now be careful on the next one. We have negative absolute value of negative 7. Hmm. Our temptation is to multiply two negatives to get a positive, but that would not be correct here. Absolute value is part of the first step of order of operations. So we take the absolute value of negative 7 and we get positive 7. And I can put that in parentheses now because I've done the absolute value. I still have this negative to deal with. And so the opposite or negative of 7 is indeed negative 7. We can see in this example that absolute value does not have the distributive property. One more example. If we have negative 2 absolute value of 15 minus 18. What does that equal? So, order of operations, we have to work inside the absolute value first because it is a grouping symbol. Doing that math, I have a new problem, negative 2, absolute value of negative 3. Now, absolute value does not have a distributive property, so I have to actually do the absolute value. And so the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. That's when I can switch to parentheses because I'm done with absolute value. And then I can multiply these together to get my answer of negative 6. So that's just a very brief review, but it'll be enough. We don't see a lot of absolute value in this course. We're going to go up to our pre-lecture notes again. So up here we have the notation for powers and roots. When we're dealing with powers, we have something here that is regular font size called the base and the exponent or power is in superscript size. So if we're going to put these on our calculator, the first thing we want to know is how to square a number. Most calculators have an X squared button. So I have a picture of a calculator right over here. And so if I want to complete the problem, 5 squared. So 5 is my base. 2 is my exponent. So I literally go to my calculator, I type 5, and I typed the squared button. And I hit enter, and it gives me the answer 25. Now, calculators can be tricky when you're trying to square something negative. So if I wanted negative 7 squared, 
My calculator is programmed in such a way that it would square this and then take the opposite, which is not at all what we want. We literally want the number negative 7 to be the base, and we want the calculator to square it. So I'm going to have to enter that with the parentheses. So on my calculator, right here's my parentheses, so parentheses. Here is my negative. It is different than my subtract button. So negative 7, and my parentheses and then square that value. And I can hit enter, and I get positive 49, which is the answer that I wanted. All right, so next we want to look at how would you take the, f oh, sorry, wrong space, how to raise a number to the fifth power. So the keystrokes are written over here. You type the base, you type the caret key, and then you type the exponent. So let's give it a try. Let's do 3 to the 5th power. That means on the calculator I'm going to type the base, type a caret key, and type the exponent. So over here on our calculator, 3 caret key. And you see on this calculator it switches my font size. On many of your calculators it will literally type the caret key like I have written on my scrap paper. Exponent 5 hit enter, and I get an answer of 243. So let's try the one that's in our notes here. We have 2 to the third power. So on my calculator, I'm going to type the base, then the caret key, and the exponent, and hit enter. And so 2 to the third is 8. Sorry, hit enter twice there. So 2 to the third power is 8. Lastly, in order of operations, we need to talk about roots. So our words, this little number here telling us which root to take is called the index. This number underneath the radical symbol is called the radicand. So if we want simply a square root, we're going to use our second button and our x squared and it will get us a square root. So let's try it. Previously we had done 5 squared is 25, so let's do square root of 25, and we already know the answer should be 5. We're just practicing using the calculator. So I use my second button, and then I use my x squared key, and that makes my square root show up. Type my 25, hit enter, and there it is, answer of 5. So let's try another one, square root of 49. On our calculators, we're going to go second, the squared button to get the square root key, and then type our 49, hit enter, and we do indeed get 7. And a calculator will always give us the principal or positive root. If we want to take the root that is not a square root, so our notes ask us how do you take the fourth root of a number? So our keystrokes, we're going to type the index first. Then we're going to use second and the caret key to get an x root symbol. Finally, we'll type the radicand. So let's give it a try. Let's type the fourth root of 625. So on our calculator, we want the fourth root, so we'll type that index first. Then we'll use second and the caret key. That gets that 4 to become the index. On some calculators you'll literally see the x root symbol. And now I can type the radicand, so 625, and I get an answer of 5. Let's try one more of those. So let's do the third root, the cube root, of 27. So I type my index first, go to my calculator, type my 3, and then I do second and the caret key. That gets me that x root. Type in my 27, my radicand, hit enter, and answer is 3. So we're going to try to put all this together and do a order of operations problem. So for this problem it's complicated, so we're going to start off with 9 minus 2 bracket, a bracket is just like a nested parenthesis, 6 
minus parenthesis 2 minus 4 end parenthesis end the bracket and then we're going to put a big fraction bar in on the denominator we're going to have 9 minus 2 squared minus 5. So order of operations tells me that I need to start inside the parentheses. So inside my parentheses here I have 2 minus 4. When I do that math that part is negative 2. Now working out negative times a negative is indeed a positive so this would end up being inside my brackets. So inside my brackets I'm going to have 6 plus 2 because I'm doing that multiplication before I can add or subtract. So negative times a negative. So now I'm going to rewrite here because I've done a bunch of simplifying. So I have 9 minus 2. I've taken care of the nested parentheses so inside them 6 plus 2 would be 8. I'm going to also simplify a bit on my denominator. So exponents come before the subtraction so 2 squared is indeed 4 and so I have 9 minus 4 minus 5. So 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 minus 5 is indeed 0. So I can simplify on the top. I have to multiply before I subtract. So 2 times 8, that's 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7 divided by 0. Now this one's tricky and that's why we did it here together. When we are trying to divide by 0, the answer is undefined. We cannot divide by 0. If we had 0 on the top of our fraction, so like 0 divided by 5, that's no problem and our calculator will do that for us, answer of 0. If we tried this original part, the negative 7 on our calculator, negative 7 divided by 0, our calculator will give us an error message because division by 0 error. It can't do it. So we use the word undefined, no definition for that. All right, so one more example, and then we'll end our video here. So for this last example, we have absolute value of 8 minus 12. Outside that we have plus a negative 2, and that's in parentheses, and it's squared. We have that whole thing divided by 2 to the third minus 2 squared. So I'm going to do some simplifying here. Inside this absolute value, 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So just writing that down. Here, negative 2 squared, I can actually do that one in my head. That is also positive 4 down here, 2 to the third, so 2, caret key, 3, and that is 8, so here I have 8, minus 2 squared, that one I know is 4. So doing my math, doing the top and bottom separate because a fraction bar acts as a grouping symbol, so in the numerator I have 8, in the denominator I have 4, and I can do that division in my head and get an answer of 2. So that's order of operations and working with our calculator to do powers and roots.